Welcome back to the Love Leadership Podcast. I'm your host, Mike O'Connell, and uh, today you can tell that I'm not joined by Pastor Todd Doxson, and uh, we just want to say this to this community. Um, we're so grateful for you. We're so thankful that you've been leaning in with us, and we hope that the conversations that we've had over the last handful of year, years have really blessed you, have impacted you. You know, we say this, when the leader gets better, everybody gets better, and Part of the leadership journey that we go on together is is growing, leveling up, you know, um, being exposed to new thoughts and new conversations. And Pastor Todd and I have been honored uh, to be on this journey with you. We do want to uh, share the news with you that this is going to be our last episode, uh, maybe for a while. I don't know if it'll be forever. We do actually don't really know. But in each season as a church, we're praying just about you know, what we should say yes to. And in this particular season, we're going to pause the Love Leadership podcast. But we just want to say a massive thank you to every single one of you that have been tuning in and going on the journey with you. Um, your encouraging messages after you've tuned into the episodes uh, have been such a blessing. And today, I'm super excited to set up the conversation that we're going to share with you. I think we're going to, you know, end this podcast with a bang. Um, we just had All In Team Night, and we had in Pastor... Fidel Gomez and his wife, Teresa, they joined us. And uh, man, powerful, powerful story. And Pastor Todd and Denise sat down with them. And we're so excited to share this conversation with you. So for the last time on the Love Leadership Podcast, get your notepad out. Man, you're gonna wanna take some notes on this one. Enjoy this episode. And if you're blessed by it, we would just encourage you to share it. Thank you so much for being on the journey with you. We love you. Come Pastor on. Todd, Denise, Pastor Fidel, and Teresa, we're so grateful for you guys. Wow. My goodness. Are you guys having a good time? This feels like, like a big family room, doesn't it? And, uh, you know, you could be doing anything on a Saturday evening and you chose to be here. I just wanted to look at all your eyes real quick and just say thank you from Denise and I and the rest of the team. Uh, your service, I know you guys do it for an audience of one. You serve, you serve the Lord, you really do. Um, but specifically, you said yes to serve the Lord here. And I know what you do behind the scenes. I know it's not easy. I know the counselings. I know um, <laughs> the the honorary person walking in on a Sunday morning that you give a hug to and you pray for. Uh, your your generous giving, bringing your first and your best back to the Lord, it uh, it means a lot. And it's 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 wild to see over the years what God has done. And tonight is a super special night. And I want to set this up in a pretty unique way. Um, in 1998, how many were not born in 1998? So, oh, oh my yeah. goodness, this is dating me. Wow. So in 1998, speaking of miracles, I found myself employed by the Miami Dolphins. And the first week I was there, off day, I went and rented a convertible at Enterprise and went down to Fort Lauderdale Beach. I'm a mid Midwest kid and just was laying out on the beach. Some random guy came up to me and he, I had one of those old school WWJD bracelets. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and some guy comes up to me. He's like, hey, um, it's actually five bucks to rent that, that chair that you're laying out on. <laughs> and uh, I noticed you got the bracelet. Are you a Christian? I said, matter of fact, I am. I just got down here. He said, so you haven't found a church yet? I was like, no, nah, man, but I work on the weekends. Do you have anything during the week? And he said, you gotta come to my church. And he said, he gave me the address. I met him there. I swear to this day he was an angel because I never, I walked into the church, never met him again. And I walked into this place, maybe similar to some of your guys' experience, Never imagined in a million years this could be church. There was a rock band. There was a guy with a mullet, you know, 
Pastor Clay, and, or, or it's Rod, Rod Piercy, Rod Piercy. They're, I was like, these guys are happy at church. It's good music. And these pastors are coming out and they know the word that we're going right through a book of the Bible. I never knew I could understand the Bible. One minute I'm crying, the next minute I'm laughing. And I'm like, holy smokes, like, what is this? Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. And we have the great honor of having Pastor Fidel and Teresa here t tonight who left Las Vegas, Nevada, in, I'll let them share more of their stories, by faith, someone say by faith, by faith with another couple, it was four of them and their kids, they moved from Las Vegas, Nevada to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Fidel didn't even know where it was on the map. <laughs> True story. They left by faith and started Calvary Chapel, Fort Lauderdale. So what I'm trying to say is, the faith of this couple and one other couple is the reason why all of us are in this place right now. So we honor the Lord, but we all also honor you guys. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. This is mind blowing that you're here. And so I wanna just go back to that time because yeah, it's the Lord's work, but you guys had a choice. And so I want to just start in this area of faith and obedience, and maybe you could take us back there and the battle you went through as you first were starting out. Maybe both of you can address, Pastor Fidel, maybe you could start out with it. And, and uh, actually, his name, we call him El Guapo, just so you know, so you guys are getting to know him. Everybody say El Guapo. Guapo. Yeah, yeah. So El Guapo, take it away, man. <laughs> Share a little bit. Our life verse is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Stand firm and let nothing move you, but give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Come on. And that how we came to know the Lord December 10th, 1978. And as time went on, that verse became a reality to me and, and to us, so that when we started going to Calvary Chapel, eventually, as time went on, I was asked to be a deacon. I gave myself to that. On Sundays, I vacuumed the carpet. Before service, I threw the trash. I cleaned the windows. I worked in the parking lot. I didn't look to see what anybody else was doing. I didn't compare myself with anybody. I didn't wish that I was doing something else. I, I felt it an honor. I'm, I'm, I'm vacuuming the carpet for God. Come on. And I gave myself fully to that. And somehow in that, it was in May of 1985 that the other gentleman, Bob, uh, I was teaching the Spanish Bible study at the time, about 10 people, but I, I was a builder. I, I was a concrete finisher and a heavy equipment operator. Never worked at a church, never dreamed of working at a church, never dreamed of being a pastor. I'm gonna be a home builder. One Thursday, he walks by and uh, at the end of the Bible study, and he says, listen, we're gonna be moving to Florida, and if you need something else now, you need to talk to Pastor so-and-so. I said, you're going to Florida to do what? We're going there to start a church. I said, and Bob, Bob, he was one of the, pa the five pastors. The church was about 3,000 people, Las Vegas. Wow. And he was one of the guys that I've had lunch with. That, that was all I knew of him. So I said, oh man, I'm gonna miss you. I said, uh, what are you gonna go do? He said, well, we're gonna go start a church. And I said, um, uh, where? Well, we're going to Florida. I said, yeah, but, but we're in Florida. Now, out of all of the subjects I flunked in high school, geography was like at the top of it. <laughs> and so when he said to me, we're going to Fort Lauderdale, no clue. Never heard of it. <laughs> never wanted anything to do with it. I'm going to be a builder. But here's, here's the, how the Lord began to work in me. And let me just say this. In the book of Ezra, chapter one, it says, in order for the word of God to be fulfilled, God moved in the heart of the king. Wow. God wanted me to come, my wife and I and our kids to come to Florida, but I had never heard of it. Hmm. I had never heard of Fort Lauderdale. 
They were leaving in two months. After two weeks of him telling me that they were coming to Florida, woke up at 4 o'clock in the morning, pouring concrete in. In the summer, we start early in Vegas. And I'm sitting there on the edge of my bed, and I ask myself the question, why does he have to go to Florida? And I answered that question. I said, well, that's a stupid one. What do I care why he's going to Florida? But that was wow. Ezra chapter 1. In order that the word of God hmm. would be fulfilled, wow. God moved in my heart. And I'm not going to get emotional, but he planted a seed wow. called Fort Lauderdale. But I'm going to be a home builder. <laughs> God, I appreciate, I appreciate it, but I'm going to be a home builder. And by the way, that night that Bob told us that he was moving that they were, him and Diane were moving to Florida, that night, that Thursday night, I told Teresa, I said, hey, did you talk to Bob tonight? He goes, yeah. Uh, he said they're going to Florida. And I said, I wonder how far Fort Lauderdale is. She looked at me and said, don't even don't think even about think it. Don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> did you really? I did. I did. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yes. Oh. So I knew that she wanted nothing to do with it. So day after day, and the way that the faith worked was, it, it was day after day. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't work it out. Man. I, I couldn't bargain with God. But, but God, I, you don't understand. I got my life planned. You know, I bought a 16-foot flatbed truck for my tools. Uh, I got a, a piece of property uh, that we're going to build our third home. I, it, it, I got it all laid out. It's 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 there. I, I what what is what is this Florida? This and I and, and and guys, I gotta be honest with you. I was so twisted in my mind that I actually said, "Did I do something wrong? Did I do something wrong? Did I miss it? Are you mad at me?" And I remember going on I-15, going to work in the morning, thinking, "Are you mad at me?" What did I do wrong? And, and, and my way out, my way out, I hadn't said nothing to her for two weeks, banging the dashboard on my truck. This is crazy. This is, this is like, how can this be? Florida, the furthest east we'd ever been is Flagstaff, Arizona. I mean, Florida, Florida. Somebody told me there's something called a palmetto bug in Florida. I don't, I don't know what that is, but, but I'm going to go home after two weeks of fighting God, not saying nothing. I'm going to go home, and I'm going to tell her. She'll put a stop to it. <laughs> It'll be over. I'll get back to my life. I'll get back to normal. I come home. I sit down on the same edge of the bed. I'm covered in concrete. She said, tell him what you were doing. Put on my makeup, put my mascara, and he sat on the bed and he said, hey, Teresa. I said, hey, babe, um, what, what do you think about moving? And she said, now, her parents, my parents, all our 3,000 relatives live there in Las Vegas, Nevada. <laughs> she goes, uh, moving? Moving where? And I said, um, um, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> And she said, she stopped, and she looked at me, and she goes, why not? <laughs> wait, 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 no, 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 that's not the right answer, that, that's not, no. No, you're supposed to say no, forget it, it's the dumbest thing, but the Lord was working in her life, and Two months later, wow. uh, and there was two other families coming. There was a worship leader. There was a worship leader that was coming. Uh, and that made sense to me. You're going to start a church, and this guy Jim and his wife are worship leaders. They're going with you. Made all the sense in the world. There was a, a family ministry. Family. Going with Made all the sense in the world. Um, I'm a concrete finisher. <laughs> Heavy equipment operator, I'm going with you. Come on. 
Come on. Praise it never, God. it never, it never made logical sense. And faith sometimes is like that. Sometimes Come on, faith. Give God praise. Come on. God, you know that. So Can I crazy. interject something here? Please okay. do. Yeah. So the beauty of God's promises, His Word, is we walk by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. And so if we have everything laid out for us, what, what kind of faith would that take? Wow. Wow. And so I was in the word of God and I was just gleaning from what God's promises said to be a woman of faith wow. and not to have my sight on man and not to be a man pleaser. And so God's promises are steadfast and true. And so I knew, and when he started giving us verses as we started praying and fasting and seeking the Lord, he gave us Jeremiah 29, 11. Wow. And he said, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans not to harm you, but to prosper you and to give you a hope and a future. Come on. And he said, go, Miss family, go. And that's what we decided in our hearts. We're going to follow the Lord. And we left everything, guys. We left our parents, our family. Some of them are watching online right now. Hi, I love you, guys. Go, Mezzas. But it's like you can't outgive God. You can't outdo God. And, you know, the main thing what you got to do is show up. And press in and surrender. Yes. See, once you surrender, you relinquish and you uh, surrender to the authority of God, wow. you watch him work. Wow. You just step back and go, wow, God, that was you. And it's big all the time. Right. And so when I, see, when I sit here and I see our spiritual, you know, babies and see what God is doing here. I mean, talk about worship. Talk about the word. Talk about you, pastors. I mean, it's just in awe to see what God is doing around the We get the privilege now. We're retired now. And we get to travel the, around the world and see and be partake of uh, celebrations and, and churches and see what God is doing now in this generation. We're the old wineskins. And to see with the fresh wine that God is pouring into this generation. And it's exciting to be part of it. And so I just want to tell you, you know, walk by faith. We may not have everything lined out for us, but that's okay. Because then if we do, then it's our ability, it's our strength, our knowledge, and we depend upon our flesh. And therefore, God gets all the glory. And I know, Todd, that there's a couple of things you want to cover, but I just want to say this. Our faith was tested. Mm -hmm. And faith is always going to be tested. Yes. I went to my boss, uh, Pat Warren, that I was working for, and I told him, I said, hey, do you want to give my two weeks notice? Um, we're going we're gonna to be moving. And he asked me, he said, where are you guys going? I said, well... Um, we're going to go to Florida. And he said, to do what? Um, well, <laughs> I'm going to go help start a church. And he said, you? <laughs> You're going to go help start a church? And here's what he told me. Fidel, we have plans for you. What do you mean? We see the kind of worker you are. And we are planning to move you up in the company. We had a, a raise coming. We had a company truck we are going to give you. And like that, my mind goes, what kind of company truck? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's challenged. Yeah, it's real. It's challenged. Yeah, it's Wait a minute. It's so I want to leave this? I want to leave this to go do what? And I had to choose. And telling our, our parents, telling our parents, when you're, when you're Mexican, it, going to tell your going to tell your mom, it, it, it's it's the end of the world. It's the end of the world, because the first thing out of her mouth was, "If you really love me." And so, uh, I know that you got some other things you want to. Cover. Well, I was just going to bring up, isn't it, isn't this? It's so cool I to can. see. Thank you. So. It just, when I was praying about this, this time, Genesis 12 just kept on coming back to me. And I don't know if we have it on the screen, but I mean, if you look at this, I mean, just, just pause for a second and think about this scripture and how this is real life. The Lord said to, <laughs> he said to you, the Lord said to leave him. your native country. Yeah. Look at that. He said to Fidel and Teresa, leave your native, leave Vegas your relatives and your father's family, go to the land that I'll show you. He didn't know where Fort Lauderdale was. Yeah. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous 
and you'll be a blessing to others. Mm. I mean, do you know when by the time, so that was 85, by the time I got there in 1998, revival broke out. There would be a, this is true, the doors would be shut to get into church. There would be a line of Bibles to get into church. A line of Bibles. Now everyone, like, some people just kind of waltz in here 20 minutes late. Not down there. It was half an hour early. There was Bibles stacked so you could get to the front. It, it was insanity when we got there. But it didn't start like that. Because you had no. to pack up the kids and, no. and you rolled no. over. And yeah. When we got there, we finally left July 20th, 1985, pulling, a, we were driving a 24 foot year old truck, pulling his two dots and 280Z. And my wife and I were driving a 1978 Chevelle Malibu with no air conditioning in July and coming across the country. And I remember we, we came across. Uh, uh, all the way across the country, and we finally got to Fort Lauderdale on the turnpike, and it was our turn to drive the truck. We'd take turns. And so I, I saw the signs, Fort Lauderdale, next four exits. And I'm thinking, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. Nobody's waiting for us. Nobody knows we're here. There's no job. There's no house. There's no no people. What? What does it mean? Where do I pull off? So I, I pulled off the turnpike on the side of the road. And Bob pulls up behind me in our car. And you know like in the, in the movies where you see the guy and the girl at the beach and they're running slowly <laughs> toward each other? Well, it was like that, but, but different. But different. <laughs> but different. And so we're hugging. We're, we made it. We made it. Now what? <laughs> We didn't have anywhere to go. And, and the Lord began to, little by little, at a funeral home, uh, have our first service in September of 1985. At a funeral at, home. At a funeral home. And I was the worship leader. Yeah. But the problem with that was that I couldn't sing and I couldn't play an instrument. Yes. But I, was, I was the worship leader. And I, I, learned, I learned one song. I learned a song. Humble thyself in the sight of the Lord. I learned that song. And so for 20 minutes, I did the one song. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You were the word. I thought there was a worship leader. No, no. Tell them what happened. Yeah, they just said, oh, so what happened was back in Las Vegas, come oh. to find out, the worship leader and his family decided they ain't coming. The mi mi family ministry uh, family decided they ain't coming. So wait, Bob, so, so who's going? Well, uh, me and my wife and you and your wife and three kids. Wow. And, yeah. and you're going to be the worship leader. <laughs> and so I, the first Sunday, the first Sunday, I'm standing up there and I did the song, Humble Thyself in the Sign of... I did it in Spanish. I did it in Greek and Hebrew. <laughs> And afterwards, when I was done, I, I, there was four people, four people, and two of them were the pastor and his wife. <laughs> and I was with the children, my children. Yeah, there was a wall, and, and on the other side were the coffins, and that's where the children's <laughs> ministry was. And so I'm finished with the song, I'm finished with the song, and they're all four looking at me. And so I remembered what our worship leader used to do back in Las Vegas. So I look at the four people, and I go, why don't you guys stand up and say hi to somebody that's here for the first time? <laughs> and, they, and, they, and, they, and they all look at each other and go, we're all here for the first time. <laughs> that's true. And now, I mean, to God's glory, just think of this, to God's glory. Yeah. Wow. 20,000 20, people on a weekly basis, wow. 10 campuses, because we just, okay, we'll, we'll go. Fine. Whatever. So crazy. Last week, we had the privilege of just kind of prepping our directors and telling them that these two were coming. And to the directors, that means nothing. They don't know anything. They don't know Fidel from the next human on the planet, right? 
So I was able to just sit and say, close your eyes. Where were you 40 years ago? And some of them were like, oh, I wasn't even born yet. And I was like, this couple that's coming next week, their yes is why we're standing in this circle right now. And the reality of your yes is unbelievable. So it's like the reason that we wanted them to be able to share their testimony is so that you would cling to the Lord and ask, okay, what are you inviting me into and what should my yes be for? So I'm so blessed by the humility that you still walk in because with the success that it has had, they could be walking so differently right now and so it's been such a blessing to follow both of you. And can I just, I want folks to know we're no different than anybody else. We're no special. God didn't pick us because we were like at the top of the food chain. I was a concrete finisher, equipment operator. My wife was a housewife. We were run-of-the-mill people that just said, we'll do it. That's it. Amen. So I say that so that anybody that's out there, out here goes, oh, I could never. Yeah, you could. Yeah, you could. Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Thanks, God. Thanks for sharing that. One thing that I was, as I was thinking about this idea of faith and obedience, we wanted to honor the Lord and thank you guys because we wouldn't be here. But I was just thinking about this next season that's coming up for us at Love Church. When we shared, we really believe the Lord's asked us to go to North Omaha and start a campus. What I thought was interesting is there's been such a wide variety of responses, if I'm really honest. You have some people that are like, yeah, let's take another mountain. There's souls that's to be saved. And then you get some people that are like, but there's giants in the land, and but this, and but this, and but this, and but that. And it's so interesting. And I, here's what I was thinking. When they left Vegas to go to Fort Lauderdale, I looked it up. It was 2,561.4 miles to get from Vegas to Fort Lauderdale by car to get to drive from Elkhorn South campus to the North Omaha campus, it's 16.7 miles. And I don't know who that's for, but I wanted to just share, like, some of you are gonna take a step of faith and obedience, and it's not 2,561, it's 16.7. And all, and the reason I say that is because when God puts something on your heart, it's pray and then obey. And if you're still called to hear and not to go there, what, what my loving, humble request is, um, in Numbers 11, there's 12 spies that are sent out. There's 10 that are like, we can't do this. And there's two, Caleb and Joshua that say, I see the same thing, there's giants in the land, but if God called us to it, he's gonna give it to us. So all I'm asking is that we'll have spirits of Joshua and Caleb as we go, amen? Amen. Amen. So we only have a couple more minutes, but I wanted, the other theme that was on my heart was longevity. And you know, you guys have been in ministry for over four decades, you've been married for over five decades. I mean, yes. I mean, that is just yeah. amazing, Amen. mind-boggling. And so, you know, we talk a lot about at this church, we're not necessarily interested in the fast fruit, but in lasting fruit. Mm-hmm. And there's a scripture in John that talks about it. And so maybe we could just conclude with maybe just a couple thoughts from you guys. What are some secrets to, you know, being in ministry and happily married for over four decades, over five decades. Maybe just share for the last few moments. I think we got three minutes left. Well, can I share? Well, my banner is the word perseverance. Have you heard, you take a licking and you keep on ticking, right? You keep persevering, you keep persevering. You weather the storms, no matter what comes. And so we've been through it all, through the tragic times, through crisis, through the joys, the mountains, the valleys, but we know that he is worthy to be praised. And so that's what gives us that longevity. That's what gives us that hope and that perseverance is knowing that, number one, he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords. It's it's him that we're serving. 
And so our marriage, we'll be married 52 years this October. And so, yes, yes. And so we, and our children love the Lord. They walk with the Lord. Our grandkids are walking with the Lord. And so it's just, it's an honor and a privilege to see as a life that's dedicated and surrendered. I can't, I can't say that enough. It's just like, here I am, Lord. Send me, use me. And that, that verse in Genesis, he says, I will make you. We don't have to do it in our own strength, in our own. I will do this. God says that's a declaration that you could take to your spiritual bank. You could deposit it, and you could withdraw it anytime you want. Amen. It's a declaration. What does God want to do in you and through you? Nothing is impossible with God. So you stand upon his promises that are steadfast and true. That there's nothing that he cannot do with a heart that's surrendering and yielding and going, here I am, Lord. So good. Come on. Yes. So good. Let's go. All I know is that a calm sea never made a good sailor. There are storms of life that if you will persevere through the storms of life, make you strong inwardly in a way that you can be a support to other people. We have been through storms in our life, health storms, mm -hmm. marital storms, children's storms. Um, we've had ministry storms. ministry storms. We had prodigal kids that have come back to the Lord. And through all of that, we have decided that we're hanging on to God's throne of grace yeah. mm -hmm. and we ain't letting go. Amen. That's so good. Can we honor the, the Lord? And Praise God. So good. I wish there was an easy answer. I wish that we could say, well, there's this little magical there's dust that you can sprinkle. Formula that you do. <laughs> so good. Um, well, any last questions? If Go you for have. it. You finish because there's so much. So I would just probably ask if you wouldn't mind for our team in this season and the idea of faith, obedience, longevity, if you could just pray that anointing, that. Um, impartation over us. And, and again, these are phenomenal, faithful servant leaders. At the, mm -hmm. This is the core of the church. Amen. So with that mind, if you could just pray that over us. Amen. It'd be great, please. And then we'll transition. Please. Do it now. Do it now, please. Father, as we join together as a family, we pray, Lord, for strength. Lord, but not our own strength. Ephesians chapter 6 says that we should be strong in the Lord. James chapter 1 tells us that blessed is the man who perseveres under the trial. Give this family strength, Lord, to, to persevere. Lord, I pray three words for this family. I pray, I pray the word flexibility. Lord, help them to be flexible. Your work, Lord, your spirit moves in ways that we don't understand it. Lord, I, I pray the word teachability. Lord, help them to be teachable. Lord, some of us, we are very highly educated. Others, not so much. But Lord, the wisdom that comes from heaven is far greater. And Lord, lastly, I pray for humility. Lord, bless them with humility. Lord, it was your son Jesus that said, blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And so I pray, Lord, that they would be that kind of uh, family that would love each other, that others would know that they belong to you because they love each other. I pray for Todd and Denise, Lord. I pray a special anointing upon their marriage, first of all. Lord, that the enemy would never have a foothold in their marriage, that they would prioritize their marriage above all things. And Lord, that they would keep their eyes on Jesus through the storms of life, the challenges of life, the difficulties of life, the joys of life. And Lord, I pray that as we've heard numbers of people that have come to know you here, that those numbers would double, that those numbers would triple, that the population of heaven would continue to increase because Love Church exists. Bless them, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. What's up, Love Leadership fam? Man, we know that if you're tuning in, you love to lead. And we hope that this episode brought you value. We're gonna be dropping a new episode the third Thursday of every month. So subscribe, like, 
Also, there's more Love Leadership content for you on our channel. Go, go check it out right now. We can't wait to see you next month.